Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I start by sharing my presentation as before. I hope it works and you can all see. Can you hear me? Can you see the presentation? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Okay. This is a uh, presentation towards the theory of emancipatory education. And this is more or less the uh, scheme of this presentation. In the first part, I will uh, speak about uh, the interaction between education and social work. And then uh, I will stress the importance of some social theories uh, that also have implication as far as education is concerned. I would focus on this concept of educative moment uh, that Biesta, for instance, uh, theorized and also other uh, pedagogists. I will speak about, a, I will propose a sort of theory of emancipatory education, a way of conceiving this type of education and then the importance of teachers uh, in this, uh, this context. So by starting with education and society, education understood both as a learning process and as a formal institutional framework always constitutes a social uh, phenomenon. Uh, education entails the acquisition of new knowledge, skills, the development of one's own personality, the interactions with the social world, as well as the direct or indirect intervention in the social state of affairs in which one lives. In short, education plays a significant role in the construction of social identity. When we take into consideration people's interactions with one another, we have to be aware of the fact that these experiences contribute to the creation of people's social uh, perceptions and behavior. These interactions uh, with an educational outlook can favor the development of either a socially imposed or a socially proactive and engaged personality. Paolo, just, uh, just a second. Sorry, sorry, yeah. to, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, aha, okay, okay. Some present. Some members of the audience had problems seeing the presentation. Okay. 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 Now I, I hope it is fine. Okay. Uh, do you have to do something in particular or does it work no, no, for it you? Works now. It works now. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. So here you can see you know, this idea of oppressing and liberating practice that uh, evidently uh, re calls us of Paulo Freire. And uh, consequently, when, when we think of education as a process of creating and transmitting a vision of the social world, uh, we are always conceiving of the learning process as a form of civic learning, actually although it, it can have different uh, connotations. That is to say, it can be more prone to dealing with social cohesion or integration or with expression of social uh, dissension. And these considerations uh, pose a very important theoretical problem that has substantial consequences in relation to educational practices. In fact, all uh, forms of active uh, pedagogical intervention focusing on the development of critical and participatory habits cannot but rest on two basic theoretical premises. Uh, the first is that they must be aware of the fact that all teaching and learning activities entail a demanding personal responsibility and that this responsibility always has a social uh, dimension. And secondly, they must be aware of the dynamic and changing character of human life and consequently of the immanent dynamism of social institutions. These two theoretical premises have practical consequences in how the democratic commitment of teachers and educators is understood. Now, uh, as we will see, this will open up the possibility of an overall theory of emancipatory education that rests on five main pillars that are knowing, understanding, living, dissenting, and country. We will speak about this uh, later. Some social theory before illustrating the theory of emancipatory education. I start with uh, John Sir in his book, Making the Social World. Uh, interesting, he explains how uh, social institutions are constructed and how they can remain in power over time. Sir presents a definition of institutions as a system of constitutive rules giving rise to institutional and social facts. In other words, a social institution is the result of a human agreement uh, insofar as it depends on a shared human acceptance in order to exist. 
uh, for sure, social and political institutions are based on what he calls constitutive rules, namely those norms that create uh, the very institution they are going to regulate. So think about, for instance, the, the schooling system. We consider the test leading to a career as a teacher to be a constitutive rule that makes possible the very reproduction of the formal educative system. These rules are characterized by the fact of assigning a function to things that per se do not have any specific purpose and therefore cannot be conceived of independently from the value we assign to them. Uh, this function assigned to inst an institution is a function of, of status, uh, since from the moment of the moment in which a thing acquires this value, it assumes a particular and unique role. Uh, think about also, in this case, uh, a simple example. I know a qualified person employed as an academic talking to an audience counts as a professor in the context of a university class. So this function status. And uh, well, thanks to Sir and to this uh, idea of how the social world uh, functions, uh, we can have a more de in-depth understanding of the interplay between objectivity and subjectivity, also when it comes to education. In fact, uh, the mere existence of social institutions require two basic things, as we see. An individual acceptance, uh, which does not necessarily mean approval, but just ac acceptance, and a collective intentionality and desire to realize, to, to put in practice a common project. Uh, this means that such an acceptance and of and respect for social norms rest on some conscious or unconscious reasons that collectively uh, people share and recognize as up for their purposes. Well, uh, we can move uh, forward. Also, uh, thinking about the interiorization of this set of rules uh, that are that is needed. Uh, not only to make a person aware of the actions she, she performs in society, but also to foster her happiness, her happiness, her satisfactions, her um, idea of belonging to this uh, community. In fact, a political community can be defined as such only when it is able to produce and maintain among its citizens a coherent uh, set of beliefs and norms that constantly revitalizes both people's trust in social institutions and their desire to cooperate in a common project. So this per perspective uh, implies a significant shift, both in relation to the educative process and also in relation to the normative idea we endorse when referring to education within a democratic framework, actually. Indeed, it implies the passage from a notion of power understood as an established power the concept of power is the expression of an unceasing constituent movement. And from this reason, for this idea of a constituent movement, I quote here Negri and Dart, uh, that wrote, when we study, we certainly gain knowledge, learn facts, and work with ideas, but above all, we foster our intelligence. That is, we develop and train our power to think. In this sense, education is as its most basic always self-education. So the idea that people have to interiorize these sets of belief and have to put them in practice. And democracy is actually this. And for this reason, they wrote democracy, democratic participatory structures of decision or decision making. Uh, so the idea of uh, deliberative democracy we uh, listened to before. Well, these um, decision making processes would have to be established to plan and found education, develop opportunities of study and open access to knowledge. So this idea of uh, changing also our institution. And the expression I quote here, ontological conspiracy that came from uh, Umberto Maturana, a Chilean philosopher and biologist, um, uh, just um, underlines the fact that democracy cannot be grounded on a social contract. That is to say, on a system of abstract rules established once and for all. On the contrary, it should be thought of as a stratified set of historically developed practices that need to be recast every single day by individuals. And for this, for this reason, being grounded on this idea of ontological conspiracy. So this uh, 
short uh, sketch, these short uh, pictures of some uh, social theories uh, bring us to the third part of my presentation, the concept of educational uh, moment. Uh, from the previous discussion, it is possible to state that education possesses a dynamic character that directly links it to the political life. The exception, novelty and relevance in relation to one's own life constitutes the means through which education can reach its goals, insofar as it is largely responsible for the construction of this ontological conspiracy. Indeed, only through the experience of personal and mutual moments of understanding, emotional perception and active participation could the real education emerge and the community of reflexive learning can come into existence. Uh, the environment in which the educational process takes place, the school, is for this reason both an epistemological and a social uh, community. The educational moment in this case can be briefly defined as we can see here in this slide, uh, uh, an event of confrontation between different standpoints, a moment that contributes to the transformation of the social reality after having transformed the self-perception of the people who live and participate in it. Uh, clearly enough, this is a very demanding idea of education. And as a education, this uh, practice of, of freeing people is evidently very uh, demanding. And also, it um, permits us to uh, reframe our concept of democracy, uh, thinking about the necessary uh, role that a revolutionary pedagogy plays. And in this case, well, Peter McLaren is uh, evidently very clear about this. The pedagogy of critique is grounded not in desire, but revolutionary love. That is recognizes that love can only exist between free and equal people who have the same ideas and commitment to serving the poor and the oppressed. So this idea of what education should be actually uh, has to ground our uh, daily practice when we as educators uh, try, uh, we try to, to, to to, to, to implement these practices with our students. So it's very, very demanding, actually. So the educational moment also is more clearly a bottom-up rather than a top-down process. For this reason, it's a deliberative process, actually. And since it rests on the real commitment of people uh, in the construction of their common world. Moreover, it possesses a very peculiar status since it always entails an horizontal dynamic of mutual understanding and questioning that infringes on the majority of our commonly accepted social and economic relations. So uh, here I tried to sketch to present a theory of emancipatory education. Um, well, I will explain this uh, table a little bit. So uh, we have already said that, uh, firstly, we uh, have to think about the theory of emancipatory education by not conceiving of education merely as a process of knowledge transmission or as an acquisition of social habits, but rather as an intellectual and uh, emotional empowerment of people towards their emancipation. Secondly, we have to do this by connecting the social commitment to the educative process to an anthropological, epistemological and political need to live a meaningful and happy life that at the end of the day is the end of a proper education. So for these reasons, we're referring to education in general and emancipatory education in particular, we must be aware of the extremely significant polysemy of this expression. The following table here now offers a better understanding of this uh, um, uh, multifaceted character of uh, education. We're referring to five different aspects that are always inherent in each and every educational process, both in formal or informal uh, context. Uh, this table presents five different categories in which we, it, is, it will be possible to analyze the educative uh, phenomenon. When speaking about education, we are always considering, uh, first, the information we shared, uh, second, the reasoning implied in the acquisition and transmission of this information, uh, third, the emotional effects that this transmission produces in the people involved in the learning process. Fourth, the ways in which this process affects the perception of social and political reality. And uh, um, at the end, the political actions that this uh, education can actually foster. And 
uh, it is always possible to conceive two alternatives, uh, sort of a list of opposition or of grace, a scale, uh, between a total, for instance, uh, uh, understanding of the reason or misunderstanding of uh, the same reason behind uh, an inductive uh, process. So these are uh, from zero to uh, to hundred, so we could say, you know, uh, from uh, left to, to to right in this case. So different uh, possibilities, and uh, all uh, and each uh, educative process can be read according to this table, I think. And for this reason. Uh, um, there could be different alternatives. And this list of oppositions produces actually a series of uh, 32 different combinations of possibility of understanding uh, um, educative act. So uh, for an, an emancipatory education to take place, it is, it is necessary to endorse a specific account of what education is and should be, uh, studying the educational process from the inside. Indeed, the type of education uh, I endorse actually uh, will be the one that as all the uh, expert of the left part of the table, so no way understanding, uh, vitally uh, live the experience, the experience of dissenting and countering actively uh, the state of affairs. So to clarify this, just an example, um, we can refer to uh, a formal educative setting, like a university class. In this case, uh, let's imagine the professor of the Department of Education that is offering a comparative outlook on primary education around the world. She speaks about many different countries, providing a lot of new information to their students who receive it without questioning the historical and theoretical reasons behind the different edu educative system analyzed. Um, Five minutes. Perfect, okay. In fact, the topic uh, scarcely interests them because they just um, think that Comparing so many countries without understanding the relations between them is a pointless activity. Nevertheless, they silently continue listening to the professor, taking notes in order to pass their exam. So in this case, it is possible to note that the notable amount of knowledge transmitted by this university class is largely misunderstood by students, assimilated in a passive manner that implies both an overt consent uh, regarding the teacher's explanation and an indirect acceptance of the social injustices that actually uh, characterize a primary education, in this case, worldwide. So in this example, the absence of an educa educational moment is not determined by a scarcity of information, but rather by lack of understanding and vital involvement, both emotionally and morally speaking. So such an example just constitutes uh, one instance on, of how the five uh, contrasts that all educative processes entailed can uh, combine. It contributes to providing the, the personal and social consciousness required for the construction of a real community able to foster a deep democracy needs a more precise and demanding educative dialogue. And this, just to uh, conclude, well, the role of teachers in this, uh, this context, if we endorse this idea of uh, emancipatory theory of education. Well, actually, uh, mm, uh, the, the, the absence of knowledge, rational understanding, emotional experience, social dissent, and political intervention in our current social and educative interactions constitutes a serious problem for the vitality of education as such and also of our uh, democracies. And responsible, responsible for this absence are also uh, we, the teachers. For these reasons, in order to be meaningful, an emancipatory education needs the help of a new figure of teachers characterized by the ability of promoting the mutual transmission of knowledge in their classes, the profound comprehensions of otherness, and of the reasons underlying a given social state of affairs. The role of, educa of educators is clearly crucial and cannot be seen as neutral. Importantly, they are engaged in this critical activity, not with the purpose of indoctrinating their students, but rather in order to promote the construction of significant networks of dialogue, conceived as counter practices of civic participation that contribute to fostering new forms of power. Accordingly, we as educators must be conscious 
in all our daily practices and pedagogical interventions, both of the theoretical premises and of the social consequences of the specific type of education we endorse, always being ready to critically reflect on our own practices. In our daily activity, we have to constantly strive to create educational moments in our classrooms. These moments are the basic prerequisites that make possible an active citizenship education, whose main purpose consists of fostering the acquisition of an engaged and committed attitude across the entire educative community. So this would open the way to a community able to express an over-dissident and emancip emancipated voice that actively counters social injustices and contributes to the construction of a common social uh, project. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.